What's up guys, Travis with Lane Shark, and we are going to try to do a little condensed video to show the proper way to install the C-Flow kit on an existing third function, existing WR long third function. So the first thing we're gonna do, obviously we have our valve already mounted to the tractor, hose is going to the front. We probably have this handle installed, which is one with the rocker switch. So what we wanna do is we wanna remove this nut on the bottom, remove this coil, and take this control module off. Keep the two screws. This slides down. All right, so you're gonna have one wire that's going to the front of the tractor, which is going to your battery. So you can cut this wire and leave it ran to the front and you can splice in your, old, your new one, uh, or you can just take it off and completely rerun the new one. But we're gonna take that, set it to the side, set this to the side, and we have our new control module that will go on. Let me just make sure those prongs line up. Put this back on. And you always wanna make sure that the wire is going to the left when you install our new switch handle. Reinstall these screws. These screws act as the ground, so you got to make sure these are on. If not, it won't work properly. So we've got this part on, so we're just going to go back to the wiring after we install the hose part. So we're going to remove this hose here. This is the T side of the valve body. So we're going to remove this hose. And then we want to remove this little nipple here. Take this out. And we have our new T and everything that we have to install. So we're going to take, pop this loose. Now ours is already loose just because we're working on it, but we're going to take this piece off. And then <clears throat> you've got your O-ring boss fitting, which will go right here. And you're going to get that put in, and then you're going to tighten this nut here to lock it in place. You've got this nipple already on. We're going to come back and put this piece on. Get that set where we want it. Tighten this. Everything's good. So then we have our return line. We'll go right here. Alright, so then everything, just tighten it all up. And then we want to reinstall this hose here. Now one thing to keep in mind, when installing a C-Flow kit, it is possible that these two lines here are reversed on your tractor. So you always want to make sure that your P for pressure, this is coming from your loader valve. So your loader valve is your power beyond line, comes out of here, goes into the P side, which for pressure, and then over here is your T side. So the fluid is coming back out of here, going into the back of the tractor. If these are reversed, when you go to start the lane shark, the motor will spin for a second and it'll lock up because it's deadheading. What's happening is the fluid is coming through here, going to the, load, to the motor, coming back, and it's deadheading right here. So we can't have that. So if that happens, you just reverse the lines, pressure's coming through here, coming back in this way. That'll solve that problem. So once you have this installed, you're going to run that line up to the front, install it on your bulkhead plate, and that's all you need to do up there. So once we have all the hoses and fittings properly secured and ran, we're gonna come back to our wiring. So we're gonna bring our handle over and obviously our plug just plugs right in. Can't go wrong with that one. And then we have our main power wire. So if you cut the wire from the old module, you can splice this back into it or you need to run this directly to the battery and you have your fuse, so what you'll do is you'll cut this in half, splice one end to the wire, splice or put the other end on the battery, and then you have constant power on the handle. So what that does, that allows you to open and close this valve if the tractor's on or off. So you have all of that installed. Next, you have these two wires. 
you've got your red wire for your seat safety or accessory wire and then you have the black for ground. Now some of the tractors are changing where they don't have direct voltage on the seat safety switch so you want to run it directly to an accessory wire so this has to turn off when the tractor gets turned off. And then it's always best to run that ground to the battery. Um, we have a lot of times where people will put it on the fender, the fender's not properly grounded, and you won't get a good ground on this and it won't work. So it's best to take that to the battery, the negative side of the battery, and then accessory on the red wire. And once you have all of that ran and secured, you can turn your tractor to accessory, click both of these, you'll hear the uh, valve click and then you can triple click this to make sure it comes on one click to turn it off once you have all of that done you want to put your crank your tractor check for any leaks turn it off make sure you don't have any leakage then turn your tractor back on hold the front button which I guess would be your left if you're looking directly at it it'll run all the uh, air out of the line, you'll hear the lane shark spin up, let off the button, and then you can test your triple click, one, two, three, it'll light up green, the lane shark will come on, you're good to go. All right, so another quick overview of how all of the plumbing flows, hopefully out on the table will make this more clear to be able to understand the entire concept because this is the same concept across all tractors. So first we're going to start right here with our Power Be Online. Again, our Power Be Online will come from the loader valve. So on the tractor it goes pump, loader valve, then to the pressure side of our WR long valve. Goes through this one. We always use the A side for the pressure of the lane shark. So your fluid's coming through here, going all the way up to the motor pressure line. So we're coming out of this line, going through into the right side of the motor. So this is pushing fluid in here, causing the motor to spin the proper way. Obviously going through the motor, coming back out, you got your return line coming all the way up. It goes to the quick connect with the green dust cap, comes out of, <clears throat> comes out of that one, back through into our C-flow return, and it bypasses this valve. That's the most important part of this whole setup is the fluid bypasses the valve on the return side, and it keeps the heat from building up. That's how we we'll, are allowed to run continuous flow on tractors, even though everybody tells us we can't. So it comes through here, goes back into the back of the tractor. So any, any variance from this, your lane shark's not gonna work properly. So again, loader valve, WR long, third function, out of the A side to the pressure side of the motor, return, comes back through here, and it allows everything to flow properly, keeps the heat down, and it will allow your tractor to run continuous flow without any issues. So hopefully this layout helps people understand the concept a little better. Uh, but obviously, if you have any questions when you're installing, you can give us a call and we can uh, walk you through anything you need. That'll be Logan that you call and talk to, who's right here. <laughs> Logan absolutely hates being on camera. Yeah. But this is Logan. <laughs> Hopefully we can use that. Let's get lane sharking. <laughs>